Breaking news from Sky 2 over Glendale. Police searching for a killer after a deadly shooting outside a crowded banquet hall. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen is live with late breaking details. Jeff. Suzanne and Peter, right now, several blocks of San Fernando Road is closed around Roberta. Let me step aside and show you this active investigation going on following a deadly shooting. I'm going to go ahead and ask Greg Palancic to zoom in to show you where it went down. We're talking about the Moran Ararat Banquet Hall. Now, let's go ahead and kick it up to Sky 2 with video from earlier this evening of the crime scene. Police say that the shooting happened at around 8.20 tonight. Two people were shot in the parking lot of the restaurant while several parties were going on inside. One person died. A second suffered a graze wound. That person is being interviewed by police tonight. So far, police do not have a good description of the shooter. They're working with a business owner to get security video. Here is what they are telling us so far. Uh, there was a uh, one uh, male shooter uh, that used a pistol. Uh, it appears to have been on foot as well. And then after, uh, after he shot the, the victims, uh, he, he ran and got into a vehicle and drove away. So a shooter is on the run tonight. We are told that he possibly headed north on San Fernando Road and possibly in a dark colored Dodge SUV. We are reporting live in Glendale, Jeff Nguyen, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Jeff. Wild weather across Southern California over the past 24 hours. And for some people, the weather hit a little too close to home. Mm -hmm. CBS 2's Adriana Weingold spoke with the Temecula man who had a very personal experience with one of Mother Nature's most powerful displays. Well, talk about the shock of a lifetime. A Temecula man was struck by lightning but walked away unharmed. Well, I was just blinded and I could, like I said, I could smell it and, and I could feel the electricity like it was in the air. Grant and Tara Steele can't help but wonder what could have been last night after realizing he was struck by lightning during a huge storm that lit up the skies across Southern California. Then there was a really bright blinding flash and I was like, whoa. I, f I could smell and like taste the electricity. Steele had gone out in the storm to cover the window of his truck when he got the shock of a lifetime. I came in and told my wife that I felt like I almost got electrocuted or struck by lightning and then when I took my hat off, I saw it was like smoking and stuff. His wife Tara says he was understandably a little bit out of it when he came back inside, but it wasn't until they saw his hat that they realized what had happened. I smelled the hat and I could smell the smoke from the, I guess, lightning hitting his head. And then I'm like, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. He took his beanie off. We saw his hair. It was all there. Everything. He was totally fine acting normal. Um, just a little scary. She says her husband was wearing thick rubber boots and a rubber raincoat, and perhaps that's what saved his life. Whatever it was, they all agree it's nothing short of a miracle. The Steele family says they learned a very important lesson. They won't be going outside during a lightning storm ever again. In Temecula, Adriana Weingold, CBS 2 News. And in Studio City, a semi truck and SUV collided in wet weather, shutting down the westbound 101 freeway. The wreckage and diesel fuel spilled. Cleanup and crews mopped up the mess, and tonight the freeway is back open. One driver was arrested. And in Laguna Beach, electricity restored tonight after a car slammed into a power pole and then flipped over. It happened on Laguna Canyon Road. From cold and rainy to hot and windy, CBS2 meteorologist Amber Lee is here with the new wind warning. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Peter. Hard to believe, right? So we started the weekend off with cool, wet and rainy conditions. We had lightning, we had thunder, but now it's all going to change. Despite the rain, it will dry up rather quickly once the winds start to crank up. And so ahead of the system, we're looking at our first significant Santa Ana wind event starting to take shape as we head into tomorrow night. So we have red flag warnings for most of Southern California. And what that means is we're expecting hot, dry and gusty. So if a fire were to start, it would spread very fast. And then on top of that, we're expecting damaging winds for the foothills and the mountain communities of LA and Ventura County, including Malibu. Winds anywhere from gusting up anywhere from 65 to 75 miles per hour and that's going to last with us till Monday afternoon. Here's a look at our winds right now. Not a lot going on, pretty quiet, but again, things are changing in the next 24 hours. I'll let you know how long this Santa Ana wind event will stick around. Thank you, Amber. A multi-city search tonight for a young woman who disappeared. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo is live in Sunland Park where family and friends organized search efforts. Christy?
Yeah, Peter and Suzanne, loved ones are not only searching just here in Sullen, but also in nearby Shadow Hills and Sun Valley. And wherever they go, they're leaving behind flyers like the one you see here. They came to this park tonight because they got a report of a possible sighting, but turned up empty handed. Signs of concern are plastered all over Sunland Park. The photo of Sahara Yvonne Fisher now hangs from trees, posts, even fences. Do we have tape? I... The number of searchers and flyers leave no doubt loved ones are consumed with worry over the 22 year old's disappearance. The days go by, it's, it's getting harder and harder to think of her out there. Sahara's mother tells us the 22-year-old left their home on Stonehurst in Shadow Hills to go for a jog on Tuesday, leaving behind her wallet and cell phone. When Sahara didn't come home after an hour, she started to worry. But her concern has multiplied now that hours have turned into days. She's very kind and helpful. Um, she may be a bit gullible. She may be a bit trusting because she thinks that all people function from that type of uh, spirit. Loved ones tell us that Sahara is very religious and likes to minister to the homeless. In fact, she may have been spotted with a homeless man just a couple of days ago. Loved ones tell us there are some details they've been asked by detectives not to share. If you have any information, give the LAPD a call. Live in Sunland, Chrissy Fajardo, CBS 2 News. Shattered back. Turner. Dodgers win. Oh, yeah. The Dodgers pull off an exciting comeback victory in game two of the National League Championship Series. The Dodgers are coming home with the series tied at one game apiece. Yes, they are. And today's road victory was a real thriller. And for fans at Golden Road Brewery in Glendale, you can tell they were a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe more than that. A roller coaster ride of emotions up until the last out. Incredible. That, that's a clutch right there. We needed that right there. Turner, let's go, baby. Oh, what a game. They fought and they fought and they fought and they never gave up. Oh, what a game. Let's go, Dodgers! <laughs> we need this. LA needs this. That's right. This watch party was put on by the Justin Turner Foundation along with the Dream Center of Los Angeles. I just hope those folks have voices come Monday. Yeah, we need them. No, we no laryngitis for those no folks. No laryngitis. All right, well, we're also going to hear from Jim Hill in Milwaukee with player reaction coming up in just a few minutes. Also ahead, a big rig crashes through a freeway divider and smashes into metro tracks. Plus, praying with the president, an American pastor at the White House after being released from a prison in Turkey. And a desperate rescue, a cheetah willing to trust humans mm. to stay alive.